and in today's video I'm going to be showing you a Mario design that has the rainbow road and then Mario and his little Mario car driving along the rainbow road with his fist up in the air. I think this is so cute. I love how neon the rainbow road shows up against my holographic black background and then you have the super extreme sculpted Mario, sculpted car, everything that's just a little over the top. I hope you like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with a smooth black background, even though I do have a glittery black background over the top of this, I knew I wanted it to make sure it was completely opaque. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't want to waste two coats of this glittery gel polish because I love it so much and I use it on a lot of my clients. And I was like, you know what? I'm one coat. One coat is enough. I don't want to, you know, run out, which is just my very um, penny pinching mentality coming into play. But two coats of whatever works for you in the background and then a layer of gel top coat, gel sealer, you get the picture. Afterwards, I'm going to take white acrylic and I'm going to begin sculpting my rainbow road on a nail form backing. This is sort of freestyle. I could have drawn it out and followed a template, but I figured in this particular circumstance, just kind of figuring out what flow looked nice once I started working with the acrylic was the best route to go. The one thing you do want to make sure is that it is an appropriate length to fit on the nail. After it is completely cured, it's crispy, you can peel it off the nail form backing and then attach it to the nail. Attach it upside down so that the side that you were had that you had up on the nail form backing is the side that is towards the nail. That way you have a super, super smooth surface to squeeze to paint your stripes on because the side that was down on the nail form backing is very, very, very smooth, very flat. So it's just going to make that process a little easier and a little more user friendly attach it with copious amounts of acrylic you want to make sure that it is very well attached and it is completely stuck down now mind you you will notice that mine looks a little different in just a moment that is because i dropped this nail i i don't know what happened i malfunctioned and it all fell down so i had to re-sculpt the very end because it broke off after all of that great stuff i'm going to take I happen to just have enough colors of striper gels that I could go through and just paint all of them with that. I'm going to do red first, leave a gap, paint my stripe of yellow, leave a gap, paint a stripe of a kind of a nice bright blue, and then I'm going to once again leave a little bit of a gap and finish off on the far edge with kind of a purpley pinky color. Some of these colors, as you can see, are a little more pigmented than others. If you've got ones that have nice, really strong pigmentation, like this fuchsia pinkish color, that would be ideal. My blue is really the one that was kind of the stick in the mud. After I've got that cured, then I'm going to go through with the colors that are in the gaps. So I've got orange between the red and yellow, a bright limey green between the yellow and the blue, and then between the blue and the fuchsia, I'm going to add an indigo or kind of like a darker blue color. So I'm going to do that for my last little stripey section, go up and through. Once all of those are done, go ahead and cure this once more. Then I'm going to use a glittery gel top coat from Madame Glam that has beautiful sparkle in it and the sparkles built in and it is a top coat. So once that's cured, it's done. Set all of that to the side, that nail, just leave it alone. Don't knock it off your table because it might break again. No, it shouldn't, but you know, you gotta just be careful. And you're going to start sculpting Mario. So with a a fleshy nude tone I'm going to begin sculpting his head and his nose so when I am sculpting Mario in this moment this stage of Mario I'm doing it as if he is cut in half and I'm doing his head and his body not his legs not his arms no limbs just head and torso which is a little bit weird just to kind of remove those other elements and focus on something that minute that small in comparison to everything else I'm also not really doing a whole heck of a lot with hair hat those other things the main goal here is to get the head and the body because this is the base that everything else is going to be built up off of. And you wanna make sure that you get that started and you get the size. Once you have that, then around the around it, on the nail form backing, you're going to need to sculpt two arms with red. These are not like the full all the way around. They aren't three-dimensional in the way that they are completely finished. This is just the base. This is still like a vertical section. And so we've got the two arms. You're also going to need to do the same process with the legs. One thing that's kind of interesting and to keep in mind as you're sculpting this is he's going to need to fit into your little Mario Kart. So you need to make sure that as you are sculpting these pieces, they don't get too big because it's really easy for all of these little pieces to get too big. And then as you go to put it together, all of a sudden he's very leggy or he's got these monster arms and you have to be careful to avoid that. So if anything, sculpt all of these pieces, what seems like on the small side. 
going back to our first Mario piece, I'm going to be adding a little bit of hair. And I really don't know why I did that because it was completely useless. Don't worry about the hair at that point, but I am going to add the silhouette of his hat. That part does uh, is more important, but the hair, just forget about that. I was getting a little excited and ahead of myself. I'm going to take the first cross section of Mario, which is the side that was up, same side that we were working on. And I'm going to attach the leg or the first leg. And I'm going to not do the arm, just do the leg, wait for the arms and attach that down because the first cross section has roundness to the front of it you can go ahead and attach the leg directly to what's up however when you flip this around and you go to start doing the other side you do want to bulk it up a little bit so that the legs don't touch so here we go on the other side add some blue first just to add some of that distance between the legs and then after that has set up just a little bit you can pick up that leg and you can set it down you're going to need to build up more thickness to the shirt to the pants to everything as you're looking at this make sure you look at it from all directions because you'll think it looks really nice and rounded and smooth and then you look at him from his backside and you're like wow he's very narrow he needs a little bit a little more junk in his trunk <laughs> and after you've got just a little bit more happening around your little mario body once it looks pretty good then you can go ahead and add that second leg if you attach your leg and they end up too close together when they go to slide into the car they aren't going to be able to go around that center control piece of the car where the steering wheel is attached so they aren't going to fit he's not going to fit so you do really need to make sure that your mario is wide enough in stance that he fits in the car again you also don't want him to get too wide and too big and bulky that he doesn't fit in the car it's a soft it's a, it's a nice little balance i do also feel it's prudent to tell you that mine didn't fit at first mine did not fit and I had to file it and that is always an option don't fear needing to file if something doesn't fit right away something doesn't look right right away something is crooked file it off do it again I didn't have to completely remove anything or like take legs off and start over I just had to open them up a little bit so that they would fit inside all right add some more to the to the shirt area he does have the overalls on so the shirt doesn't have to be quite as wide and as big as his pants are but it does have to just have a nice base in there because you will add some more blue over the top of it to add like the front panel of the overalls and the straps but just get a nice a nice start to to that shirt it is so easy to get color where it doesn't belong when you're working on something of this size so if that does happen just be patient with yourself now going through, I'm going to add the bulk to his head. Like I said, that little bit of hair I sculpted was completely unnecessary because I'm covering it up right now. Sometimes when you're working with something and you don't 100% know what the best steps are, you do something that is useless, unnecessary, going to get covered up anyway. And then you can laugh at yourself and say, oh yeah, that was a waste of 12 seconds of my life and move on. So we're going to add a nice little roundness to both the both hemispheres of his head after that you're going to notice he has what looks suspiciously like a butt crack which is really what i found so funny since i added the hair color in there already it just looked just not not good um but we're going to cover that up too we're just going to blend right over the top of that and then nobody needs to know he had a butt head yeah, such is life. I'm going to be adding a little bit more roundness to his nose. So you're going to bulk up the nose, both left and right. And then same thing, if it does need to have a bead that goes down the center of his nose, if there does seem to be a crease there, go ahead and fill that in as well. Smaller areas like the nose, you can kind of look all the way around it more easily from any any vantage point. So you might miss such a, or you might be able to catch that kind of a of view right now he has the most amazing mohawk red mohawk we're gonna fix that though unfortunately i liked him with the red mohawk personally but we're going to be adding his iconic mario cap so we're going to go through and fill that in all the way around it's so fun to add these little elements and to do all these things and basically get to play dress up with acrylic i love sculpting little characters like this and getting to make all of their clothes and hats and accessories and i just think it's so much fun if you've never tried it before and you have any interest in in you know doing a character or trying something like this i cannot recommend it enough because if it's something that seems enjoyable to you hopefully you will get as much of a just utter glee out of it as i do so we're going to build up that hat you want to make sure that it has enough of a a lift on the front of the hat enough of a height that you can paint the little Mario M on it so you don't want to slack on the space that's there because he does have the the little circle emblem on the front of his hat so you want to make sure that there is space for that and then it does kind of have a little lift off in the back as well smooth out all of the shapes when you're sculpting something that is going to be viewed from all 360 directions you want to make sure that as you're sculpting it 
you are looking at it from every direction as well because there's going to be a little spot here a little spot there that got missed has a divot has a extra bump that you just want to take care of as soon as possible all right now we are going to add his hair for real this time we're going to add the brown hair going all the way around the back of his head make sure that you leave the space available for his ears so you don't want to cover up that you're going to add his ears eventually but you just want to make sure that it's not the lighter color acrylic the more tan color is not going to want to cover up the brown very well because it's such a tiny amount chances are the pigmentation will not just completely cover it so you don't want to have to cover it you want to leave that ear space empty and then add the ear in place otherwise your ear is going to look kind of dingy or bruised or it's just going to look a little bit odd not quite right so add both ears in there so that he can hear and after you have after you have that done he's really looking pretty good he's getting to the point where you know you just have to add those last couple details I wouldn't add his arms yet I wouldn't add his boots yet I wouldn't add most things at this point so when you are sculpting him there's certain things like the arms and the boots that you don't want to do until he's in his final position because there are factors like where his arm is going to get placed will be somewhat dependent on steering wheel position and you can guess but you won't know for sure and you don't want to do something where it will not fit and you have to fix it so the last thing i'm going to do on mario at this point at this stage is i'm going to be adding his overall straps once those are done just set him to the side because everything else is better to add later back to your nail form backing we're going to sculpt a base for the cart so as you're sculpting this you want to just make a very flat kind of pancake shape and then you're going to get it into a nice oval and then carve out the wheel wells on the left and the right leaving kind of a little point in between them it doesn't have to be perfect it's going to get you know adjusted a bunch of times between now and then just get a nice base on there after you have that done i'm going to build up the front of the car and the back of the car leaving a nice kind of low spot in the center for where mario sits so as you're kind of working up the front of the car it's very narrow at the very very point the very nose of the car and then it kind of comes up which is where the steering wheel attaches to and as you are sculpting this you also want to try to get a little a little indent kind of up and underneath the left and the right of that center piece that is going to be where his feet and his legs go um don't expect yourself don't expect the acrylic to want to get perfect little caves underneath there because it's going to want to collapse on itself slightly plan to use your e-file to carve out the leg space just in general on the back of the car it's a similar process but you're building up the back rest of the seat too as you're sculpting this and it's a bit more rounded it doesn't slope down quite as much as it does on on the front nose of the car so you go towards the bumper it's a bit more a bit more rounded you're also going to want to add a little bit of a height spot to those points that are between the wheel wells so really by the end of it the only place that has that deeper indent is going to be where mario's butt and legs go after that everything else does get another thicker area of acrylic if you have access to a fast setting monomer the one that i use is the 3d monomer from koopa I would highly recommend using that for sculpting any extremely 3D built up design like this one. It'll make it so that your acrylic doesn't fall as quickly. It's not as thin. It'll have a little bit thicker viscosity. It'll want to hold its shape faster. So it doesn't have to be that particular monomer. I do love that one. I have used it for um, a couple years now and it is one of my absolute favorites. However, any faster setting monomer should do the trick. Just make sure you're using one that um, is a professional grade monomer. I would never recommend anybody buy monomer off of Amazon or any any non-pro website. I wouldn't even buy it from Sally Beauty. There is a lot of Sally Beauty's just because I don't feel like that the monomers that they sell are high quality and they're just going to gunk up your brushes. But as far as like buying it off of Amazon, there are so many illegal products that are a toxic chemical that is not legal to use for nails you're supposed to use an a monomer that is an ema an ethyl methacrylate however there are a lot of a lot of monomers that are out there used in salons used by you know consumers or hobbyists that are an mma a methyl methacrylate and those have a whole host of of bad side effects, uh, respiratory problems, cardiac problems, skin problems. Very easy to get an allergy to them. If you are unsure of your monomer, 
a good way to check it is by uh, dissolving it and seeing what happens when it soaks in acetone if it gets really gummy and really really sticky like a uh, gummy bear in the sun in a hot car for two hours that is the wrong kind of acrylic it should kind of almost get flaky and I can I don't have any MMA I would do a a comparison video of what it what it shouldn't look like what it, versus what it should look like but I don't have the shouldn't and so I could show you what it should look like I can do a video on that if anybody would like it but I just I every once in a while I like to re-mention that because if you buy products off of Amazon there's so many other places that are just kind of sketchy you know like dollar nail art stores there's a bunch of different websites out there you don't necessarily know what you're getting so you just want to make sure that you're buying from a reputable place. So now going back to our design at hand, I am going to file both the cart and Mario until they fit together, which is something that just plan into your working time. Don't assume it's just going to fit together and then be disappointed. Assume it's not going to fit together and be so happy if it were to. I'm going to file both the length of Mario's pant legs and the space between his pant legs so that he will fit in there. He's almost there. He almost fits. I'm also going to file in the cart a little bit to make sure that, you know, the seat is the right shape, the leg, the leg spaces are the right shape. And then once he fits, give yourself a huge round of applause because he fits in there, but just do it a little bit at a time. Don't go crazy on your filing and take off too much at any point because you don't want to have to put it back necessarily. So just take, you know, little hints off here and there from the sides, from the seat, from Mario himself. If you need to file a little bit off of his butt, go ahead and do that. Whatever needs to be done in order to make him fit, just take it slow do a little bit here and a little bit there so that you don't accidentally over file it or make it look unbalanced i'm going to take a little bit more length off of his pant legs remember he does still need to have his shoes so you don't want to take off so much acrylic that his shoes don't fit after i have that filed and he does fit in there he will sit down just fine i'm going to add a little bit more height to the steering wheel um base the steering wheel zone that front dashboard i guess would be the word and after i've got that i'm going to set the that piece aside and I'm going to work on some of the other things that are needed to sculpt this little cart for the biggest thing is that he's still going to need the wheels so I'm going to be laying down some beads of black acrylic sometimes black acrylic is so I don't know uncooperative is the word I have for it we're just going to press the black acrylic in from side to side until we get something that slightly resembles a circle and keep going with other shades of acrylic this would be so much more simple but because there has to be so much pigment for black acrylic to actually look black it doesn't um it just doesn't go quite as well that's another video i've been meaning to make forever was my description of why certain acrylics are stronger than others just never got around to it one of those things anywho we're going to add four wheels or sculpt four wheels two of them slightly larger two of them slightly smaller the ones that are in the rear of the vehicle are going to be the larger ones this is another space where you may find that you need to do a little filing on your cart to make sure that your wheels fit. Same thing, it'll be a balance between maybe filing the edges of the wheels a little bit, filing the wheel wells a little bit until everything fits together nicely. I'm going to smooth out the tops of my wheels. You do want them to be thick. You don't want them to be very skinny little pancake wheels. You want them to have some, some height to them as well. So I'm going to add a second layer of acrylic to my wheels so that they do have that, that height built up. And that's also an opportunity to smooth out the exterior shape a touch if if that is something that your wheels need after i have those wheels done i'm just going to slide them to the side and i'm going to use black acrylic yet again and i'm going to sculpt the dual tailpipes for the back of the cart I'm going to pull those into just kind of long narrow shapes and then pat them from side to side to bring it in and get them to have nice straight clean edges after those are done same thing leave them on the nail form backing until they can uh, cure and get nice and crispy and then i'm going to take my wheels and i'm going to attach them one at a time onto the cart this is not a super user-friendly part of the process as did i mention in the beginning of this part of this video that this is one of the hardest things i've ever sculpted so true okay we're going to keep going this is one of those moments where you where i was seriously questioning whether i had a good idea in sculpting this little cart or if i had pretty much lost my mind and so it's just these wheels just because of how the curve of the wheel wells was they didn't necessarily fit in there and want to be attached it's easy peasy they were a little bit a little particular so we're going to attach first the front ones and I'm attaching them with white acrylic and I'm smoothing them in to the rest of the shape of the car so I'm going to kind of just let that bead sit in there the first one and then after it grips a little bit which you can feel um 
then move on and fill in the rest of the space between the wheel and the car. I so the part of the reason why I said this just was so difficult to sculpt and I'm not trying to discourage anybody in fact if anything I would encourage you to do something that you feel is difficult and I don't know not straightforward is there is just so many elements and so many shapes that have to fit together to sculpt this little bugger so getting these wheels to fit was like I said not not straightforward and after you have them all attached you want to make sure that they are straight because that was the biggest problem I was having in this moment is that the wheels wanted to tip inward and that was not going to work because obviously the car is not going to drive if all the wheels are pointed in a v-shape so I have to make sure that they stay nice and nice and straight nice and parallel to each other finish off anything else that needs to be done with them as far as the color goes if they need to have more black after that we are going to attach those tailpipes on the back this time I'm attaching them with black acrylic uh, that is a questionable decision after I try to attach the first one then I'm going to go through yeah see so questionable add some more black acrylic to really secure that down if there is some black smudging around the tailpipe it isn't that big a deal it'll get painted over the majority of this little cart will not stay white parts of it will stay white but the majority of it will be painted blue or red and so as you're doing this if there's a little black smudge here or there yeah it's all right worst things have happened just go ahead and make sure that first one is attached when you are attaching something like this before you let go just gently move your finger a little bit and then watch to see if it does something like it shifts or it moves or it flares out mine wanted to flare out a little bit if you can catch it and just gently push it back into place you should be good to go and then you're going to want to do the same process for the other side bam there it is same process other side after that is done go through and just look at your car from all angles look at how the tailpipes look are they nice and round look at the wheels are they smooth is the front of the car have that nice slope that you're going for just give it a good little 360 view and see what you see after you're happy with that you're going to sculpt a blue seat try to find the shade of blue that is a little different than the shade of mario's pants and after you have that blue seat sculpted, in, I was looking for the darkest blue I had. Then you're going to slide Mario into place and press his bottom into that seat color that you just used. This will stick him down and then there is no turning back. You are stuck. I'm going to sculpt the steering wheel in front of him. And after you have the steering wheel sculpted, basically the only thing left to do is add Mario's arms and add his boots. Because remember, he wasn't quite done yet. There are so many little factors in making this, making this design. There's just so much to think about. So as you're adding in those uh, last little details, you're going to want to add the boots, brown acrylic. Try to use brown acrylic that is on the drier side. So you don't want a really soupy bead. You want to pull the liquid out of the back of your brush so that as you set it in there, it doesn't just flow out into that space. It kind of stays contained to an extent. And you're going to glue his arms onto his body round those out just like how you did with the legs after they are attached you're going to need to add the you know the shape of them all the way around go ahead and just fill out the first arm is the one that's going to be up in the air with his fist as you're adding the red acrylic do be careful that you don't take it too far down where you cover up too much of like the side of his overalls you don't want it to extend down too far and if you want to try to round out the inside of it the part that's towards his body you can I just think that's a little too snug and I almost forgot you can't forget his mustache so with a touch of black acrylic very carefully sculpt that underneath his nose if it seems like sculpting it underneath his nose is too much to ask because it is really hard to get under there and you might get black acrylic in places where it doesn't belong like I'm using my tweezers to help me um, you may consider just doing that with paint instead but before you add that second arm if you are going to do it with acrylic I would put the mustache in because once that second arm is in place it'll be much more difficult to get to his nose and now we're going to attach the second arm and use your steering wheel as a guide for the angle of the arm and how it should be placed and then let that just use gravity tip the tip the cart to the side so that the arm rests against the steering wheel and his body connect everything together with red acrylic and just like you can predict I'm sure you're going to need to use more of your red acrylic to round out the shape of the arm this should come as no great surprise at this point that that would be the next step as you are filling out and rounding out that arm be very careful that it doesn't that the red acrylic doesn't drip down or touch the white car anywhere because some of those places you do want them to just stay white and last but not least you're going to need to attach the brim of his hat so you're going to put that right at the 
right at the front of the hat and then let that sit for just a minute. While that glue is drying, you can go ahead and take white acrylic and you can sculpt his hands. The one that is up in the air is pretty easy. If you wanna get super detailed with the shape of the hands and try to sculpt in individual fingers and thumbs and all of that stuff, go right ahead. I'm gonna go the easier route because it is so tiny. It is completely uh, expected and anticipated and normal to just kind of smooth it out and sculpt it in more of like a rounded, a rounded shape for both the fist in the air and for the one that's on the steering wheel. It's so tiny that that is that's pretty much your option. And then I'm going to take red acrylic, smooth out the transition from the hat to the brim, make sure that that is all attached after. So the first little bit of white acrylic that I did on the hands was just like the wrist area, the cuff of the glove. And now I'll go through and I'll add the rest of the hand, which again, like I said, is basically just like a blob of acrylic, a controlled blob, a purposeful blob, but a blob nonetheless. And just kind of build those up until you're happy with the size. Focus more on the size and the generalized shape instead of the details on the hand. Now we get to do the fun part of detailing all of this with acrylic paint. So the biggest things that are going to need to be painted at this point is Mario's face and then adding all of the color to the cart. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the bottom of the cart blue. As you are picking out your colors for doing all of these things, there are a couple things that are blue within this design. There's, you've got the overalls and the seat and then the blue that's on the cart, as well as the blue that is on the Rainbow Road, but those aren't as important in this particular discussion. But you wanna make sure that your blues are all somewhat different. They're very similar because they're all that like true Mario blue color, but if you can use slightly different blues, that would be super beneficial. So the bottom of the cart may be a slightly lighter blue, the overall's kind of in the middle, the seat the darkest one. Hopefully you'll be able to get some variety and just make it look like it's not all exactly the same. With yellow paint, I'm going to be painting the end of the tailpipes and the center of the wheels. With that yellow, yellow is one of those colors and we're painting over black, so it's possible that that will require a second coat. Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to just wait and see. And then leaving a gap of white in certain spots, I'm going to be adding the red details to the cart. Same thing, hopefully your red is a slightly different red than your acrylic for your acrylic paint. Mine definitely is, my red acrylic is nowhere near as vibrant as my red paint to the point where I thought it was too different and I wanted to make them a little bit more bright or make my acrylic a little brighter. So I'm going to add some red highlighting over my red acrylic, but because that acrylic is underneath versus the white underneath, the colors still, once the red dries down, you can tell a difference, but it's good just to have that little variety so that as you're looking at it, it just doesn't seem like it's all too similar. With white paint, you're going to need to add Mario's eyes and then any details on the white portions of this design that need to be brightened, highlighted. So I'm going to do his gloves and then I'm going to go through in any places that I feel like need to be brightened up a little bit on the cart. I will do that as well. With black paint, I'm going to add some outlines here and there where they are required. Details on the wheels, adding that little kind of a star shape little outlines here and there just on the pattern of the car. And then I'm going to take a lighter shade of blue again. So this is gonna be the lightest one. And I'm going to add a blue stripe down the black of each wheel, just right around the middle. So when you're picking out all your blues, you just have to make sure that you have a variety. The best thing to do for this one is just to mix a very small amount of white into the original blue paint that you used to paint the bottom of the cart, just to brighten it up slightly, just to get a little difference. And then that is just what you need. On a design with this much detail and this small, I would recommend doing some outlining, maybe more than what is present in the original, the original movie, the original art, because there's not so much outlining that happens anymore. I like to do some outlining. I feel like it really helps, especially when it's this small and this detailed, just make it so that you can see all of that hard work that you put in. It just brightens things up. I added blue inside Mario's eyes, and then with white paint, I'm going to be adding that emblem on the front of the cart, and just starting out with a circle right now, and then about a tooth third circle on the front of his hat. After you have those two circles of paint done, just like the yellow, you're going white over a darker color. The white may require a second coat. Let it dry and then decide. It's good to add those spots and then leave them until they are completely dry before you decide. After that, I'm going to go back to my white paint and I'm going to write the M's inside both of my white circles or two third circles. Then attach the cart to the rainbow road with a dab of some Acrogel cure it and that's it. That acro gel will hold really well both to the gel that's on the rainbow road and to the bottom of the acrylic cart. Also, you probably want to top coat your little acrylic, all your acrylic painting on Mario 
and the cart. I missed that step in the video, but don't forget to do that. Otherwise, he's all done. I hope you guys like this one as much as I do. This was so much work. And if you stuck through to the end of the video, I so appreciate that. And I will see you all next time. Bye.